All right, y'all. I got three more reviews for today at a minimum. At a minimum. Because I still have to get caught up on everything else. So we got Married to Madison, Real Households, and then Married to Madison. <laughs> and that is, that's all the notes I got. So, and I have other stuff to do. So, I'll, if I can get everything out today, I will be happy and amazed. But we'll see. So, Married to Madison, Season 5, Episode 17, Reunion Part 2. Dr. Heavenly, uh, so we pick up where we left off, of course. Dr. Simone just said that she and uh, Cecil are divorcing. Dr. Heavenly said if she knew it was this serious, she would not have played around with it. Toya and Jackie knew. They knew, and they actually knew when they um when uh, they shot the uh, season finale. So pretty much they lied to us in the confessional, unless that confessional that they did when they said that everything is good between them happened before that. So, so um, she says Cecil has never been, he, I'm sorry, he's been unavailable for 10 years. So this show is on season five. So let's just say seven years has been on, but it's probably a little, so between five and seven. That means that before the show had even aired, she was even saying that he was already emotionally unavailable. So it is what it is. Toya says um, he doesn't want it. And Simone goes to uh, prove her point. Because Simone is just getting her fucking face like, you can't sit here and tell me what the fuck my husband wants. You're not in a fucking relationship. Like, she is going to fuck in. And Jackie gets between them. And I think Jackie was trying to calm the situation. But I think in her doing that, she further exacerbated it. Because now, there is a buffer. So, this is giving Dr. Simone a little bit more reason to sit here and be extra loud and everything else. And I can understand, you know, them saying they looked up to Cecil and Simone. Well, I'm fuck, I don't know. But saying they looked up to him and everything else. But, I mean, it's their relationship, you know? And um, she says that they had a blow up. He didn't want to talk to the counselor. And she pretty much told him, if you leave the house, if you leave right now, it is over. He left what the fuck you thought I was going to do, you know? And he went with a female friend. But it was just, and it just, just platonic. They ain't do nothing. And Dr. Heavenly tells Toya, Simone needs support. She don't need you sitting here attacking her. She needs support. So the girls go in the back. The guys are not having their moment. They're, they're at the bar. And I will say that like, I liked it because you had the females doing their talk. You got the males doing their talk. And then they bring them together. Now, here's the thing. Look, y'all. Andy know what the fuck he doing. Y'all remember how Andy licked up Auntie Patty and had Patty spilling all the Van Dross's business? Yeah, I, see, y'all act like y'all know the Andy. Andy, I see you. I see you. I, I see what the fuck you doing. Sitting here getting their asses drunk. So you, I, I see what the fuck you doing, Andy. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. Eugene lost forty pounds. Uh, Damon points out that Cecil is still wearing his ring, which is further saying to him that he does not want the divorce. And it may not be a done deal, Jess. Yes, Cecil says that his golfing buddy did drive a wedge between them, and he didn't think that it would. Curtis uh, then talks about the man's opinion of him and mentions Eugene had a lot to say, and Eugene is literally just like Toya, always in some shit. The only difference is Toya stand up in her shit. Eugene don't. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, Eugene was just like, oh, well, you know... It was just a joke, and da 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 da. And Curtis was like, "Look, man, it's a real shit." Like, if the first comment it is what it is, but the fact that you were constantly saying something like, "If you had a problem coming me with it," and Eugene's trying to talk about his moral compass and all this other shit, and I think he saw that Curtis wasn't having it, and Curtis like literally is kind of give him just like give him that whole I don't know who the fuck you think you're talking to type of thing. So then you have Eugene backpedaling, pussy popping, and whatnot. Is what the fuck it is. Damon, the whole, the whole thing with Damon come up about men cheating versus women cheating. Long story short, his whole thing is, I can say this, I can say I'll do this or whatever, but you won't know what you would do until you're in that situation. I still think he would leave heaven if she cheated on him. Now, everybody's back. Uh, <clears throat> Curtis uh, has moved back upstairs. And they um, pretty much removed the divorce paper, so no more divorce. Uh, Quad and Greg, Quad wants appreciation. Greg wants time. <clears throat> Quad says she still wants a child, but just not under the conditions that they're going through, which I can understand. If you already going through some fuck shit, having a baby is not going to make anything 
better. And it is funny how everybody was sitting here, and I, I understand the difference, but <clears throat> everybody was getting on Lisa Nicole for one, the kid giving her situation, but they don't, but they don't understand quads. So they, and I think it's because of the simple fact that it was um, Lisa Nicole that wanted it, given all of the strife and the bullshit. But I think with the other girls, them not necessarily knowing all of what is going on in Quad's marriage, they don't necessarily understand it. But my thing is, if you saying that y'all got some fucking problems, whether I know it or not, yeah, you should not be bringing a child into that fuckery. So, Quad brings up the office and whatnot, and how she does, like, she does all this, and she, there's no appreciation. And, you know, Quad says that she was stressed because she wanted her man to succeed. And when she's, I'm like, damn, she just spoke a word. When you love somebody so much, you will stress yourself out. You go out of your way because ultimately you want your help me to sit here and succeed and to meet their dreams, to meet their goals, to meet their expectations. So you will sometimes go without and sit here and make sure they good. I sat back like, you know, now nah, I ain't the biggest quad fan. But when she said, I'm like, well, you said a motherfucking word right there. And then Quad says that uh, <clears throat> there are things that happen in their relationship that the girls are not privy to, but she's not going to put everything out there. And I get what she was doing, where it's like, we have our issues. But it's not for me to sit here and use that shit as a story. Like, I, I'm not going to necessarily put our business out there. And if y'all really think about it, if y'all watch Quad, again, I ain't the biggest Quad fan, but she does a lot with her businesses and use this platform to promote her businesses and she if you really watch it she pulls the heavenly where she is trying to not put her relationship business out there but Greg was like okay well fuck, we just gonna put it all out there so we're gonna visit it right well not next next is real housewives of a lot of then i'll finish up with that and if i have time today between editing and getting other shit done, then hopefully I'll be able to get all the other reviews done. So that's it.